Hey, it's Will here for Hair Guard. So, finasteride is one of the most effective ways to stop hair loss and by far the most practical. One pill a day keeps the hair loss away for at least 85% of men. Finasteride achieves this by blocking the creation of DHT, the male hormone implicated in male pattern baldness. And it blocks this hormone extremely well, something we'll come to shortly. However, finasteride's famous problem, on the other hand, are the nasty hormonal and sexual side effects. Most studies report that 3 to 6% of men will experience erectile dysfunction and loss of libido. About one out of every 100 will also have to deal with gynecomastia. And the men who develop symptoms like this will typically need to stop treatment permanently. Then you have a far larger number of guys who simply won't touch finasteride precisely on account of these side effects. But even if you don't get any side effects, the reality is finasteride is a very non-specific treatment. In order to target a tiny amount of DHT in the hair follicle, you're crushing your DHT levels all over the body. Systemic finasteride will also have knock-on effects on other hormones, including testosterone. And this is where topical finasteride comes in. Though it was never FDA approved, there is no doubt that topical finasteride is effective against hair loss and almost certainly more effective than minoxidil. For example, a 1997 study compared topical finasteride to placebo in 52 patients with pattern hair loss. The patients in the finasteride group received a topical finasteride solution twice daily. Those in the placebo group got an identical vehicle solution but without any finasteride whatsoever. Treatment lasted 16 months and the researchers counted the patient's hair on a monthly basis. You can see the results in this graph. For the first four months, there was no statistically significant differences between the two groups. But after that point, the group started to diverge. The placebo group slowly and surely deteriorated, whereas finasteride group retained and slightly increased its hair counts. So topical finasteride works, there's absolutely no doubt about that. The question is, can it match the oral version? For this, we turn to a later study that directly compared the two treatments. Here you had a sample of balding men split into two groups and treated for six months. One group was given a topical finasteride gel in combination with placebo pills. The other received an identical looking placebo gel in combination with real finasteride pills. But neither the patients nor the treating clinicians knew what each man was receiving. This is called double blind study. Initially, the oral finasteride group tended to see regrowth first. But by the end of the six months treatment period, the regrowth in both groups was relatively similar. And just last year, we got what is by far the largest and highest quality study to date on topical finasteride. Note that the study was funded by a pharmaceutical company which makes this particular topical solution. Over 400 men with AGA were randomly assigned to one of three groups, topical finasteride with oral placebo, topical placebo with oral finasteride, and topical placebo with oral placebo. So you basically had a direct comparison between topical finasteride, oral finasteride, and a placebo. You can see here how the hair counts evolved over a 24 week period. Topical and oral finasteride are the two curves at the top, and they gave essentially identical regrowth. So guys, this study more or less confirmed what we knew in previous studies, namely that topical finasteride is about as effective as the pill. The other big question concerns the side effects. After all, avoidance of systemic side effects is the only reason anyone will ever start topical finasteride. The studies generally report topical side effects only. And often these topical side effects are due to the vehicle solution or to the minoxidil, which is frequently mixed in with the topical finasteride and we'll return to this later. Systemic side effects, particularly sexual ones, are absent in these published studies. For example, the recent 2022 paper found that the incidence of sexual side effects was lower in the topical finasteride compared to the placebo group at 2.8 versus 3.3% respectively. It was 4.8% 
for the oral group. The researchers concluded that, quote, topical finasteride was well tolerated and it had a safety profile not meaningfully different from that of a placebo. Having said that, this lack of reported side effects in the clinical literature is difficult to reconcile with two pieces of evidence. Firstly, the anecdotal reports we get from the hair loss community. Many men on Reddit and on other forums who tried it and report that they did get systemic side effects. While it's different to put a number on these reports, they no doubt exist, though they appear more rare and not as pronounced with the topical version. Secondly, it's difficult to reconcile the clinical literature on these side effects with the data on topical finasteride systemic effects. We know from a pair of very well designed studies out of Italy that the drop in blood DHT levels with topical finasteride is not that different from what you get with a pill. Both routes of administration result in a systemic DHT drop of roughly 60 to 70 percent. At the same time, these Italian studies reported that topical application results in a systemic concentration that's about 15 times lower than the oral. So to recap, on one hand, topical finasteride minimally absorbed into the bloodstream, many times less than oral administration. On the other hand, even this relatively minuscule amount of finasteride is enough to dramatically reduce blood DHT in a way comparable to oral treatment. The only way to square this data is to conclude that the standard one milligram daily dose of finasteride is excessive. And indeed, we have strong evidence from other studies that even a fraction of the one milligram dosage, say 0.5 or 0.2 milligrams, are enough to produce a comparable drop in blood D levels. So how do you source topical finasteride? If you're watching this from the US, there are several vendors that sell ready-made topicals either as a standalone topical ingredient or in combination with minoxidil. If you're in a different country, it might not be as straightforward and you'll probably have to source it through a compounding pharmacy. A more affordable way is to mix some grinded finasteride pills into an off-the-shelf minoxidil product, be it two or 5%, although we don't recommend this. Regardless of which route you choose, you will require a doctor's prescription to source the finasteride. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I've put a link in the description to watch Alex's 90 day hair growth challenge video, which is a must watch, especially if you do want to avoid finasteride. Leave a comment on what topic you want me to cover next, or let me know if you've got a question below, and I'll see you in the next video.